Welcome to the Encourage Podcast. We are all different ages and different life stages, and we come from different cultures and churches, but our common thread is the hope of Jesus. Here's some of that hope to get you through today. Today's devotion is written by me, Anna E. Randell, and is titled, Celebrating the Sacred Silly. Yesterday, my youngest turned four. He is a constant joy to our whole family, full of mischief and love, and big feelings and silliness. We all pile onto his bed at night to read him stories. He tags along to his siblings' sporting events and is a pro sideliner, and he melts our hearts regularly. My kids love their birthdays, and I love celebrating them. Well, and really, I love celebrating just about anything. For the nearly 13 years that I've been a parent, I have thrown amazing birthday parties. I'm not shy about saying it's a gift I have, the gift of planning a party that walks a thin line between being over the top and casual fun. Themes in the past have included a Bob the Tomato Veggie Tales party and a hamburger party. Yep, hamburgers were the theme. I've made a from scratch standing doll cake for a princess party, wiggly blue jello ice blocks for a frozen theme, and a three foot sub sandwich waiting inside for the players after they ran football drills in the snow. I've created an entire party themed around hair bows, one for the color pink and one all about horses, complete with horsey snacks like carrot sticks and apple slices. One year, A unicorn party involved a ring toss game with an inflatable unicorn horn that one bold uncle donned. The themes have evolved and grown up as my kids have done the same. And this year, with a couple of tweens and an official teen, they will be the most mature yet. We are looking at a Vikings football party, a Taylor Swift party, and a spa party. But my newly turned four-year-old continues to keep us all in the moment in the way only a toddler can do. Because his birthday party theme this year? pickles. That's right. My guy had a million options that he shared during the three months he realized his birthday was coming up. Awareness of time isn't exactly the skill set of a toddler. He considered characters like Paw Patrol, orange, his favorite color, dinosaurs, and other things he currently loves. But when he landed on the idea of a pickle party, we were all so tickled that it stuck. During his party, we will be enjoying pickle pizza, dilly lemonade, giant pickles on a stick, popcorn with optional dill seasoning, and a big green pickle-shaped cake. I'm also thinking of some kind of beanbag game or maybe pin the pickle to the jar. It will be silly and fun and perfect for him. Celebrating the silly is something that I love to do. Like, let me in on the obscure thing you adore and we'll make it a whole thing. One line in a movie? Let's say it whenever possible. A favorite 90s era sitcom? I'll binge it with you and bring the popcorn. Quilting? A favorite pop star? Beloved dog breed? I'm here to recognize the joy it brings you and celebrate it. Why? Because experiencing pure delight in the things we're hardwired to love is worth leaning into, whether or not it makes sense to anyone else. For instance, nothing makes sense about my deep love of our Minnesota State Fair. I hate crowds. And between 150,000 and 250,000 people attend each day. Over 1.9 million people this year. I hate hot weather. And it takes place over the 12 days before Labor Day, likely our hottest days of the year. I do not prefer operating on whims and without a plan. And we twist and turn our way through hundreds of acres of fairground, being led fully by whims. My stomach hurts if I look at a new food, and we sample everything at the fair, from mini donuts to milkshakes, corn dogs to walleye bites. Yet, our annual state fair day brings Christmas morning level excitement and joy to my heart. Each year, it's just us and a couple hundred thousand others gathered at the great Minnesota get-together, testing out tractors and each other's patience. This year, We spent 13 hours walking over 18,000 steps and seven plus miles. We tried new foods and savored old favorites. We pushed the stroller through crowds and celebrated our beloved state, beaming every time I felt camaraderie and group bonding over the DNR building and Miracle of Birth Center and the intricate handcrafts on display and buckets of cookies and old church dining halls 
and gigantic pumpkins and big Minnesota love. We had such a great day at the fair that for the first time, we surprised our kids with a second day and had just as much fun doing entirely different things. Between the fair and my youngest's pickle birthday theme, it occurred to me that maybe the things we love most don't have to make sense. Maybe the silly things we adore are actually sacred. Maybe the things we love can just make us really happy, period. And maybe it's by design that they do. Would the leaves have to change color in the fall? Probably not, but it absolutely delights my soul that they do. Would zebras have to be striped? I don't think so. And they are one of my kids' favorite animals. Would delicious, complex, and beautiful fictional worlds have to exist? No. And yet the way in which our favorite characters and series impact our lives is wonderful. What about music? Choral arrangements and marching bands and jazz ensembles? All interpreting the same notes in wildly differing ways to the sheer delight of audiences. Cool water on a hot summer day. Best friends sharing lives and hearts. The fact that no snowflake is exactly like another. A perfect strawberry bursting with ripe flavor. These are just for joy creations designed by the creator for the pleasure of his favorite of all, you. And you know what? He takes even deeper delight in who you are. The Lord your God is with you, the mighty warrior who saves. He will take great delight in you. In his love, he will no longer rebuke you, but will rejoice over you with singing. Zephaniah 317 NIV. As you go about your day, I hope you seek and find glory in the everyday, the small, the just-for-you treasures. I hope you tuck away in your heart and know in your bones that the one who created constellations of twinkling stars and coral expanses under sparkling oceans loves and delights in you, just as you are. And may this be the lens through which we view one another, beloved delighted in, adored. To read more from our writers, visit encourage.me, subscribe to the podcast so you never miss a single episode, and find us everywhere on social at Encourage. If you love listening to the Encourage podcast, then you'll love our books, devotionals, agenda planners, Bible, and Bible studies. Shop the full Encourage collection at dayspring.com and use code PODCAST10 to save $10 on your purchase. The Encourage podcast is brought to you by Dayspring. For over 50 years, Dayspring has created quality cards, books, and gifts that help you live your faith. Find out more at dayspring.com.